Hello and welcome, RC Shimmy in the hangar. Thanks for joining me. Today I show you the Sparrow Micro 2 in comparison to the Predator Micro from Fox here. So, Runcom versus Fox here, as always. I read that they have the same chip inside, so in theory they should produce quite similar image. Foxia cams are really good, but sometimes they have blue tint to the colors. They have wide dynamic range approach here on the Predator Micro. For me it always looks a bit cloudy. Sometimes I end up trying to clean the lens because it, it feels like the lens is clouded or foggy. But it isn't, it's the wide dynamic range algorithm. Here it's a bit better. So let's compare those. So the form factor is about the same. The fox here is a bit longer. But on this shot you see that the lenses are different. And I think the lens on the Rankin is a bit better. And also, while they have the same thread, they are different in their lengths and in their focal lengths maybe. You can't exchange them to see if the lens affects the image that much. You do not get it in focus. Both of the lenses have the IR coating on the lens, by the way. Rankim wanted to also send me this little Bluetooth device and this cam settings device. I refused to review it because I didn't want to go that deep into cam settings. If you're interested, I will link it now and maybe have a, an image somewhere here. It looks like an interesting thingy. It's not that expensive and you can have an Android or iPhone app setting your beta flight settings over Bluetooth, which some of you might be into. I'm, I'm not that type that always tinkers around with the settings on the field, so I didn't need it. As I said, latency. I try to do latency tests in two manners now. The direct way, where I measure the video cable out of the cam and see the immediate effect of latency and the glass-to-glass -glass latency where you measure the latency from this glass, the lens, the event hitting the lens, going through, being transmitted over wire wireless, being received and being displayed on the glass of the screen. So it's a glass-to-glass -gl -glass latency is the real world application and of course it includes the latency of the screen. As we've learned with the with the bad goggles last time, uh, goggles can also include 100 milliseconds of latency, which is weird. So, I will do both latency tests. A lot of you guys ask how I measure the yellow line, which represents the, the video change. I have this little photo diode here. It's just, imagine as like a resistor. And if light hits this, it changes its resistance. And you can measure this change in the curve, in the yellow curve. So you have a plus and a minus here on this cable. This cable is just a bit longer. I probe it before and after a little resistor that I had to include. So here and here it has to be measured. And you can then see the change of this thing here. And indirectly measure the change of light. So as I thought, on the conventional test I do, on the glass to glass latency test with the photodiode here, I come to the around 5 milliseconds. But now I know that this monitor has 4 milliseconds around of latency that it adds. So the new cams are really down to like 1 or 2 milliseconds. And we see this if we measure the video cable directly, like with this, probe the video cable and see the change in video curve. So I see here 1.3 milliseconds where it starts to get bright. So this is the PAL frames when it's dark, so all the levels are down. And the, the frame gets higher here when it shows light. I can demonstrate you this. So now we have light. Now you see, since I opened the box a bit, it was some light, so it's only half the height. If the box is closed, turned off, turned on now. 
you see this change of light and you always see it at the same time and that's the, the, the funny thing because there are different cams and some cams would take a whole frame to draw the new light levels but those cams here the newer ones they instantly switch to full light mode which makes it really easy to measure their latency and their latency is almost non-existent this is the Predator Mini, my favorite cam. And it also has the same effect and the same latency, like 1.3 milliseconds. So on most normal new cams, run cams and Fox years, I think the battle of latency is over. It's very, very low. Of course, interesting to see what the really lovely run cam Micro Eagle does. Maybe the best image quality at all. But what do we see here? Also really consistent starting at 13 milliseconds. Ah, now a bit less. 12. But the nice thing, it always starts and stops at the same, yeah, maybe when a frame and is near. That's a good thing. So that's the update on the Runcam Micro Eagle. It has 12.2 milliseconds of latency, which is not that bad either. Now, out of curiosity, I test the Arrow Pro and I think if I remember correctly this is a CCD cam. Let's see what a CCD cam does and we always had a thing with CCDs that they were the fastest. Of course it's not anymore but you see the, the change. The CCD doesn't always start right where the latency begins. It's rather a frame, frame driven. I mean, this is a half frame and it's half lit, and this is fully lit back there. But uh, now this frame starts at 14 milliseconds. Now it starts at more. Now it's better. It's like 10 milliseconds. So I don't want to say uh, now it's even better, 5 milliseconds. I don't want to say that those cams are slower, but on the video out cable to show the result only in full frames. And that's a funny, funny conclusion to have. Because until now I thought all the cams would work the same, but CCD and CMOS seem to work differently. And in fact, the CMOS cams are easier to determine the, their latency for me now because they always start at the same line. I hope this was not too complicated. I will stop this now. And I saw that the new cams have 1.5 milliseconds of latency, which is, yeah, really, really low latency. And I think I also discovered the two differences between global shutter, CMOS and CCDs that sometimes the cams show the, the bump in latency curve almost immediately and the other cams only show it every 20 or every 16 milliseconds when the PAL or NTC frame is. But I see this is getting boring so <laughs> maybe I'll do a full latency one hour video sometimes and explain all that. Uh, you just need to know it's damn fast. That's all you need to know. It's damn fast. It has a good image quality as you see in the screenshots or in the, in the samples now. So if you need a mini cam, I can recommend it is. The Foxia, to be honest, as much of a Foxia fan that I am with the larger Predators, the Predator Mini is really my favorite cam at the moment. I have it installed for example on the Vortex here, on the Mojo. As much of a fan of the Foxia cams I am, I don't think that the Foxia Micro Predator was that good. Uh, in this case the 
crown goes to Runkim. <laughs> it's easy as easy as that. Well, let's take a closer look at the image. Okay, so I think the image looks really good. There is some color artifacts like on many run cams. Yeah, if you find it ugly, this might pull you off of buying this. I don't think it's that bad and it's it's really awesome what kind of quality we get out of those small camps. So I could live with this, but this is personal preference. So you've seen the quality now from the live feed. Once again, I used my little USB grabber setup that I use in combination with the laptop. On the laptop I have virtual dub and I just capture it there and I do interlacing there and try to get the best possible quality out of these cams for you. Because the normal DVRs you use, they, they degrade the image quality very much and it's not good for a review. So for your reference, this is the installation here on the field for you. Perfectly flyable. Looks very nice. I don't want to do a full unboxing. Run cams come in these lengthy boxes. Boxiers come in the square boxes. You get the joystick plate adapter. I kind of like this over this a bit more, but yeah, you don't need it that often. And you get some mounts and some silicon wires. Yeah, it's always the same with those cams. So I don't want to go into much detail. Okay, while we are here, let's do one more test. I just wanted to show you the white dynamic range effect because my studio lights here, they are really, really bright. The white dynamic range algorithm tries to soften this down so it's not overexposed, which it does a good job of, but this also means it gets a bit cloudy. And here on the outside shot, on the window, you see really good detail outside and inside. So that's all the magic. I have some neon lights up there and softbox behind me. Skin tones and quality, uh, it's a bit difficult maybe, but that's not what you're after. And also the color reproduction in general is a bit messed up here with the white dynamic range. If you're just in beautiful weather outside, it, it doesn't look that bad. And as a comparison, the fox here, fox here micro predator, that was, that's what I was talking. These clouds here, they are much more articulated than on the run cam. So this is a, that's not a foggy lens. That's just the uh, the way the algorithm works. It's fine. It's uh, it's really good in in different situations where you have really high contrast. But in normal application, it sometimes ends up looking a bit cloudy. And of course, the extreme blue tilt, which you can try to get rid of, but not 100%. And we also often like to do the light change test. It's quite fast. The light is changed fast, but it's in two stages again, and that's the white dynamic range. It's from complete darkness, now it's in night mode, it goes to day mode, and then enables the white dynamic range, which, which, but it does it at a really good speed, and you will not crash because of this, I guess. Okay guys, I hope I covered all your questions. If not, leave it in the comments. I'm happy to answer them as always. Thanks a lot for watching. If you liked it, give me a thumbs up like this or like this. I don't care. You can even do thumbs down, but please explain if you do, because I like to improve my videos if there is something I can improve. 
Please subscribe if you aren't already and if you want to be always up to date, hit that bell icon so you actually get mail notifications with my videos. I will not spam you, I do maximum two videos a week, so it will not be too much, I guess. Thanks for watching, see you next time, bye!